All right, so we're recording. Okay, so um, this tonight, what we're gonna do um, and why I wanna record it is because obviously there's gonna be, there are other people on the team and there's going to be more people on the team who are in the position that you guys are in, which is you all have reached out to me on some level and said, hey, I want to be a district manager. Um, how do I get there? Kind of feeling a little bit like I signed up, I watched the Getting Started videos, maybe I did a launch event or two, and now kind of feeling like you're in this low. Is that kind of where you guys are feeling like you're at? Like I'm in this low, I've done the things, but I'm not seeing the results I, I maybe thought I was gonna see, or I don't feel like I've got the traction to move forward. Is that kind of what you guys are feeling like? I would say so, probably. Yeah. Okay. So what I wanted to do tonight was I wanted to kind of just you all, um, just some nuggets, I guess, from my years of experience in Arbonne and what I have seen be most effective, what has worked not only in my own business, but also as I've coached lots of other people through district manager. And, um, and just to give you guys kind of some, maybe some how to's and some tangible steps, um, of, of what you can do now that you're in this place. And so the first thing, and whether you think you've done these things or not, um, I would recommend going through and doing these things that I'm going to share tonight. Um, again, even if you're like, I, I did that, that was part of a getting started step. Um, you maybe did it, but now that you've been in your business a little bit, you can kind of revisit it and maybe some things will have some some different clarity for you. So the first thing is really when you are getting your business started and once you have done the launch events and you're not feeling like you're maybe getting the traction of the results, you really have to identify, do you have a why that is worth working for? Because a lot of times when we get started in our business, the thing that first carries us in the first 30 to 60 or 90 days is just pure excitement of like excitement, nervousness, this enthusiasm of like, ah, this is something new, this is something exciting. But then like all things, whether it's a new job, a marriage, parenting, <laughs> the shininess all wears off, right? And then you have to really dig in deep and like think about why am I still staying married or why am I still staying in my job or what are those different things and it's the same thing with this business and I think that that is very important especially when you are in the place that um, you guys are finding yourselves in which I, again I want to also let you know it's totally normal like it's totally normal for people to get their businesses started and go to district in their first 30 or 60 90 days it's also totally normal to have people kind of hang out as a consultant for six months two years so on and so forth, and not move to district manager um, for quite some time. Hold on. Yes, that's fine. You have to talk to her about it. So, um, yes, just shut the hallway door. Valerie, take that upstairs in the sitting room. So, what you really want to do is you want to make sure that you have a why, because you'll hear in Arbon. Um, like when I first started my business, there was a phrase that said, have a why that makes you cry. And you do want to have a why that makes you cry. But what um, is that you have a why actually that work. Um, because there, there are seasons and you guys are in maybe one of your first seasons. Um, maybe you've been in this season before. Um, but you'll come into this season again of where you work this business simply out of a commitment and a decision, not because there's any great warm fuzzy feelings attached to it. <laughs> okay, I haven't been in my business for 15 years because it's always been warm fuzzy and or fun. I've been in this business for 15 years because I knew it was what I wanted to do because it was going to create the lifestyle and choices that I wanted. Okay, so I would like for each of you um, whether you're on live with me tonight or whether you're watching um, the recording is I would like for each of you all um, to really um, 
make sure that you have, sorry, a why um, that, that makes you work. And makes you work meaning it, it's going to push you. It's going to, you know, and for me, um, I'll just share, um, when I first started my business, um, if I didn't make this successful really once I became an area manager, because I kept working full time when I was a district manager, um, because that's what our life was set up on was that budget. And I just didn't have the freedom to just quit my job because I started my Arbonne business. Most people don't. Um, now if you're home and you start your Arbonne business, that's a different story. Your family's kind of set up on that budget, but we, I was working. And so I couldn't just quit my job and lose all that income in order to start the business. So, um, but I knew once I got to area manager, I could replace my income and a lot of people can. Um, or at least start to replace that income, their take home pay. But I also knew that if I didn't keep growing my business, I was gonna go have, have to go back and get another full-time job. And I didn't wanna do that. And so for me, often that was the why that made me work, was that I didn't wanna have to go work for somebody else for 40 hours a week. I wanted to discipline myself in order to work 15 hours a week to produce the same, okay? So really identify, do you have a why that will actually make you work? Not a why that you're like, this is why I want to do Arbon, kind of like this utopic, I want more money, I want more time, I want more choices, but like an actual reason why you're building this business, okay? And you're going to, and that will help anchor you through these seasons, because like I said, the season you guys are going through right now, I'm just kind of feeling a little bit like in a lull or yeah, I need to kind of like grow past this. It, it's cyclical. It comes, it will come again. And it's just another, it's just another level of growing of personal development. That's what really you're facing here. Okay. So another thing that I want to mention to you guys is that when you are starting this business, you know, we do talk about that it only requires, um, you know, 10 hours a week to get the results that you're looking for. And that is true. What most people um, don't always understand is those are 10 hours of what's called income producing activity. Okay, you can shorten it, it's an acronym, it's called IPA. And so getting on Sunday night team huddles, listening to training calls, things like that, that doesn't really fall into that bucket of 10 hours a week. 10 hours a week is getting your products your opportunity, your message, the mission in front of people. And, you know, a district manager can make anywhere from 250 to $1,000 a month. So let's just take the average, let's say $500. Well, if you're gonna go out and try to find a seasonal holiday job and you wanna make $500 a month doing that, most seasonal jobs, let's say, are um, paying maybe $10 an hour, that's pre-tax, right? So you're going to have to be working five or 50 hours in a month in order to yield that. Well, that does break down to about 12 hours a week. That means you have to physically show up to the Starbucks, to the Target, to, you know, the Uber driving, whatever that would look like in order to make that happen. So are you showing up in that same way for your business? And if you're not, then there's, there's a reason why you're not getting the results that you're wanting. And oftentimes what I find, um, and I had to learn this in my own experience, and the only thing that, the things I'm sharing with you guys are all the things that I had to walk through. I was really bad at Arbonne for a really long time. And I have, you know, learned my lessons. I've been able to teach a lot of people, but I thought about Arbonne a lot of times, but I wasn't actually engaging in the activity that it required. And so it does require that amount of time, that amount of priority, that amount of consistency. Okay, that's the other thing is that I find that a lot of people will work two hours one day and they'll send out a bunch of messages or they'll make their list and they'll do their follow up, but then really, if, if they've got a good sense of like honesty or self-awareness, they would say, oh, it's actually probably been four or five days since I actually did that same work, since I actually did that same activity. 
And so um, just having that consistency in your business is it, it starts to really multiply itself out. The last thing that I want to say um, in regards to some of this, this particular topic is in those 10 hours a week, we're looking to with, so the 10 hours a week equals 40 hours a month. So we're looking in those 40 hours a month to be getting in front of 40 people again, with the products, with the opportunity, okay? So I would recommend that you all start tracking not who you're reaching out to or who you're asking, but who you're actually presenting to. And I'm gonna talk about that part because I know that I used to say, well, if I could just get people to book a party with me, if I could just get someone to listen to an overview with me, I'd be more than happy to go share it. And I thought, that I was really at the mercy of other people responding to me and that they actually dictated the speed or the growth of my business. And um, that felt really bad because that felt like other people had control over my business. And that really isn't true. Um, what I learned is that if I wasn't getting the responses that I was looking for, there was a couple things that I needed to change. And I'm going to share that with you guys in a minute, but um, you really cannot um, evaluate whether you're growing or whether things are really more, whether are things working for you until you have had 90 days, so 30 days in a row. And in each of those 30 days, you have shared the products and the business with 40 people. Those are the numbers, okay? So what that does is at the end of 90 days, you have shared with 120 people. If at the end of 90 days, you're like, Missy, I can show you right here. Here's my notebook. I got 120 names. This is what I shared with them. This is when I shared with them. And I've done this all in the last 90 days and I'm not yet a district manager. Um, I would be hard pressed to find that person, to be 100% honest. That just doesn't happen because the numbers always really um, kind of sift out and out of 10 people that we share with, um, we are going to find at least one to three of them that are going to say yes to the business. We're typically going to find two to five or six of them that are going to respond to the products. And then you might have maybe four or so um, that are just not interested in any of it. And that's fine. But and so if somebody's getting in front of 120 people in those 90 days, by pure default, they are going to find results. Okay, so what happens often, and again, I'm sharing what I have had to personally walk through, is there were seasons when I felt like this isn't working and I would get so mad. And it because I was evaluating too soon, or I was evaluating based on numbers that I wasn't doing enough in a short amount enough of time, okay? So that's another thing that you wanna be really tracking is again, not how many people you're reaching out to because here's the thing, I as a leader, no one in Arbonne can guarantee or say specifically how many people you have to reach out to in order to get 10 yeses to hearing about the business or get five people to agree to host. Some people have a lot of influence in their market. Some people have a really large market. Some people have a really convincing or persuasive personality and they just kind of, <laughs> you know, like bombard their friends or family until they say yes. Like that wasn't my personality. I didn't necessarily have a lot of influence, but what I did do was I went and I asked everybody. And I'm going to give you guys some tips on that. But there's, so some people will ask 20 people and they'll get seven that'll say yes to hearing an overview and hearing about the opportunity. There'll be other people that will ask 50 people in order to get seven yeses to hearing the opportunity in the business. Okay. And here's what I'm going to say. You have to let go of the number of people that you have to ask. All that you're looking for is the number of people that are gonna say yes, okay? And you can't 
you can't take on this attitude of like, well, it's not really fair that she asked 20 of her friends and family and they're all super supportive and they all, you know, she's got a great market or she was in a sorority or she's really connected and I have to ask 50 people because if you get stuck there, you're never going to grow this business. Okay. Did I think it was going to take me 14 years to become a national vice president? No. My initial plan, do you know how long I thought it was going to initially take me? Two years, 24 months. I thought, I know what to do. I got this. I can figure this out. Two years. Well, two years went by and people became national vice presidents in two years. In my seventh and 10th year of the business, there were people going national vice president in two years. I had to give up the how long is my journey and know that what I was holding on to was what I ultimately wanted out of this business. And so we're going to scale this way back. If your first initial goal is to be a district manager, you got to give up the how many people do you have to reach out to in order to yield the same results as somebody else. That's why we talk about you can't like compare and comparison is the thief of all joy because if you compare, you know, your journey, your timeline, all of that with other people on our team or in our bond, it just takes away any sort of, you know, joy or, or enjoyment that you're going to have building your own business. Okay. So that's the second thing that I wanted to touch on is that you really want to track and, and you can even go back now and just say, since I signed up, how many people have I actually shared the products in the business with? And if you don't have 120 and they're not in a 90 day window of time, then you just haven't done enough quite yet. But the good news of this business is there's always a new day. There's always a new week. There's always a new month, right? So that's where you want to just, and that's why I started with the why, because the why is what gives you that drive to do this again tomorrow and the next day and the next day. Cause here's the thing you guys, this is like a business of groundhog's day. You just do the same thing over and over and over again. And in the beginning of your business, you're going to feel like you're doing a lot of work and you're not getting paid very well. And then your business is going to grow to the place where you feel like, okay, my work is equating to my effort. Like I'm getting compensated um, for what my input is. And that typically happens around area manager or bonusing area manager, right? When you're making like, two to $3,000 a month, you feel like, yeah, I'm putting in consistent part-time hours and I'm making two to $3,000 a month. That feels awesome. And then you guys, what happens as you become a VP and a national vice president is you start to get an output that far exceeds the part-time hours you're putting in. What I make for the hours I put in far exceeds what I should be making. Okay. Does that make sense? But it's because also I've put the time in and I've taught a lot of other people how to be successful. And so you have to just know that oftentimes we expect too much on the front end, but we really don't expect what we should on the back end. And that back end can be life changing um, for families and individuals. So um, you just have to kind of that's why entrepreneur life isn't for everybody. That's why, you know, um, this is different than being an employee, but I know that you each have the desire. And if you're watching this video or you're on this call, you have a desire to make this work. And so you just, um, you're just going to grind it out for a little bit, but here's the thing. If you're willing to be consistent for the next 90 days, 120 days, maybe a little bit longer, you will absolutely be a district manager. And then you'll be teaching people how to be district managers and well on your way to area manager. Okay. So the third thing I wanted to talk about was growing through this idea or this um, perceived obstacle, because it, it is a perceived obstacle, the obstacle that I thought that I had, which was this idea of if people would just say yes, then I could be successful. Well, if people would just respond to me, because I've sent out 50 text messages, then I could hit my goal and then I could promote to district manager. But because they're not, I'm not able to grow my business, right? And that is a really dangerous 
mindset to get into. And again, I was there and I was there for too long um, because you, you're you then saying that you are subject to other people's responses in order to be successful. And that's simply not true. So when we talk about or how, if you're sitting there thinking, okay, yes, I understand I'm supposed to share this with 40 people in a month, but I can't even get two friends to say yes to me. <laughs> or I can't find one person who's willing to host, then I'm going to give you some tips on, on some ways to grow through that. Okay. So the first thing that I want to say is really, um, evaluate how many people every day are you reaching out to and asking? Okay. And it is better to reach out to five people every day for 30 days than to reach out to 50 people on the first day of the month when you're excited and your belief is high and your goals are fresh and then wait till the 27th of the month when you're like, crap, we've only got three days left before close and I'm, everybody's running all these crazy specials and I'm trying to figure something out and then you pump out another big clump of messages, it would be better to have the consistency. It's, it's the compounding effect. It's like you'd rather have a penny a day that doubles than be given a million dollars. And most people have a hard time believing that, but it is true, but it's the compounding effect and having, you have to give things enough time. And it's the same with reaching out. It's the same thing with, with all of this. Okay. So you want to make sure that you're doing this consistently. So decide what can you consistently commit to every day that you're going to do for your business? What is, what's the, the seeds you're going to plant every day? What's the investment that you're going to give it every day? Is it five people a day? Is it 10 people a day? Is it 50 people a day? No matter what, you know, when you see people on Facebook, and they're promoting to national vice president. You know, there's some young gals and, and really they're such incredible girls. They have a sick work ethic and a discipline. But when you see them promoting to national vice president in like nine months, you have to understand that they're reaching out every day to like 60 people minimum every day. So they're getting, they're just dumping all these people into this funnel but they keep doing it, they keep doing it, they don't let up on that gas, okay? So just evaluate for yourself, but that might not be the season of life you're in, that might not be the pace that you wanna set, that might sound horrible to you. It doesn't matter what your pace is, you just have to decide on what that pace is gonna be, okay? The second thing is evaluate what is the energy, what is the belief that, you're, that you are holding that you're, projecting when you're asking people are you asking them the same way that I would ask them are you convinced that these are the best products and the best opportunity and whether or not they can see that for themselves you are convinced of it to your core and this is something that when you're new that's where this excitement piece is helpful at the very very beginning because it's called ignorance on fire is better than knowledge on ice. It's like people just kind of vomit Arbonne all over people because they're so excited. They're just like, I don't even know about the 30 days. This is amazing. It's my favorite. Fizz, 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 and make it, make it, make it, whatever it is, right? And they get super excited. But then if, you, if you're in this place of feeling like, okay, there's a lull, or I've got to restart my business, or I got to get re kind of back on the horse, you can, your energy can be low. Your belief can be low. And so when you're reaching out to people, whether you always recognize it or not, it translates into how you're asking them. And so it can often sound like, I don't know if you'd be interested. I hate to bother you. Um, there's no pressure. You know, you're using language like that. And what you're doing is it's just like pushing <laughs> the energy and the excitement. There's no sense of urgency. There's no sense of passion. There's no sense of, sense of conviction when you're reaching out to them. That's why voice memo, if you're gonna like choose to send messages versus calling people, voice messaging can be so great. 
Um, I've had several gals on the team and they send video messages. They just record them and then they send them. They're really quick, like 30 seconds. But evaluate, like, is your energy up? Do you, like, smile when you're sending your messages? When I first started Arbun, I was told, one, I had to call everybody because we didn't have texting. Um, so if I had to ask anything, I had to um, call them. But I was told I needed to be walking around while I was on the phone. And I needed to be walking by a mirror often and smiling because you can hear a smile in your voice. I know it sounds so dumb and so dorky, but there is an energy when you talk and you've got a smile on your face and oh my gosh, I'm so excited versus an energy of like, okay, I got to do this. So, <clears throat> okay, Ashley. So I need to ask if you'd be willing to like, I don't know, there's no pressure and it's fine if you don't want to do it, but I just, I need to ask if like, you know, do you think maybe you could have a few friends over? No pressure, right? That is like, well, of course she's going to say no to you. That is not exciting or thrilling or urgent or high passion. And so you have to create that. However, that sounds for you and your personality. You don't need to be fake and you don't need to be like feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm like being so not myself but you can speak with what's called authority, conviction, and enthusiasm. So the acronym is ACE. And you speak with that. You speak with the authority that, you know what, I'm brand new and I'm gonna be really honest, I don't know everything about this business, but what I can tell you is that what I know is amazing. And it's so amazing that that's why I decided to become a consultant with this business and to partner with them and to represent this brand and to share this passionately with people. Because I know that what I'm learning is stuff that I want other people in my life to learn, right? That's not spastic, that's not crazy, that's not like hypey, that's speaking with some authority, that's speaking with some conviction and some sense of enthusiasm of, I've got some goals I'm reaching for. And, and when you share that, you tie it back to the, the why that's making you work. And I'm just going to be real honest I'm, I'm reaching out because I want to know if you would be willing to do me a one time favor and help me get in front of four or five new faces that I don't know, or that I haven't met or that, you know, I, I, I know I met them a couple times at your kiddos birthday parties, but I just want to be honest. The reason I'm building this business is I am so over having to work full time, but my family needs the finances. We need to get out of debt. I don't want to have to go to back to work full time my kids need braces, whatever, whatever the things are, the whys that you have, you share that with the people that you're reaching out to and you help them connect up the dots that you're not reaching out because you just love Arbonne's products and you want, you know, like, oh, I'm just so excited about the products. I want you to try them because if that's all you share with people when you're reaching out to them, what they're going to say oftentimes is, oh, I love what I'm using, or I'm, uh, I'm not really interested in changing my products or my brand. And you're going to lose that opportunity because you haven't connected the dots for them of why you're asking them to take a listen, to take a look, to take a peek. Okay. Um, so you got to get your enthusiasm up. For some people, for some of you, you might need to go and start expanding your network. Oftentimes, excuse me, when people are like, I don't know how to find 40 people to get in front of, you have to go start expanding your network. I had to do that. I was living in a city that I had been in and I had been living in Louisville for <clears throat> a year and a half. I knew very few people because I was, I was newly married, but I was a commuter student to U of L. So I didn't really know anybody that I was going to school with. I was also 22 and married. So that put me in a weird category because people were not married at that age. And um, the only people that I really knew were the people at my church and my church already had three ladies driving a Mercedes with Arbonne. The church was only 600 people. So I knew, and like, because of lack of technology and connecting and social media, like I couldn't connect with high school friends and people I grew up with and family in North Dakota. It, it just didn't work. 15 years ago. It works now, but it didn't work back then. So I had to go out and I had to go and meet people. That was part of what I had to do for my business. And many times 
when people are in a place where they're like, I don't, I don't know 40 people that I'm going to get in front of, then your job is to go <clears throat> connect and make connections and relationships. Some of that you might pay for, you might join a class to work out in, but a lot of it can be free, but it's just taking every opportunity to meet new people. Because can I tell you guys something that I do not love to do? I do not love to go to birthday parties for my kids. Like when they get invited to other people's birthday parties, I'm like, eh. like two hours of like watching handfuls of kids run around. Not my favorite thing, but I go. And do you know why I go? <clears throat> I go because it's an opportunity to get to know other people and build relationships. I don't go with samples. I don't go with a catalog. I don't go with the plan to like sell our bond at the birthday party, but I go to network. I go to meet people. When I first started my business, I went to networking events. I got out of my house. And I know that we live in a day and an age where we can do all of this very digitally and you can do that, but then you've got to learn to network via social media, which means you got to follow people on Instagram. You got to create content that they want to find appealing and attractive. You have to offer value, meaning you probably have to do some videos or share some recipes or give some parenting tips or if you live like if you're like a gardener or farmer or things like that like you've got to share value into the marketplace the world of social media if that's how you want to connect with people and you can absolutely do that when I started my business like I said we didn't have that so other things I did was <clears throat> if I didn't have can you guys tell I get like on soapboxes about all these things, but I'm like, how do you condense 15 years of experience into like 30 minutes? So <clears throat> if I had planned, say a Tuesday night as an Arbon work night, but I didn't have a party booked and I found myself like, I don't know who I'm going to reach out to. I would take three business cards and I would go and walk around the mall. And I wouldn't walk around the mall because I was looking to sell something. I was walking around the mall because I was looking to hone my skills of connecting with people and networking with people and paying attention to people. I wouldn't go through the drive through at my bank. I would park my car and I would go in and make deposits and I would engage with the bank tellers. I wouldn't drive through the Starbucks drive through I would park my car and I would go in and I would visit with a barista and I would build relationship. Okay. There's all kinds of ways. Like I went to, um, the public library today for a story time. Guess who's there? 40 women, 40 women, right? So that's free. There's a place to go meet people. I go and take a $2 workout class <laughs> at a church that I do not attend here in the city because it's open to the community. It's a $2 class. The child care is $2. It's so cheap, right? So that's an investment I make into my business. One, I'm getting a great workout class, but two, I'm in a room of 30 people. Do I, again, I don't look to sell at those events. I don't look to be like the weird Arbonne lady, but I do look to build relationships with people. Okay. And so that's another avenue that you might need to look at pursuing is, am I growing my network? Am I looking for ways to expand who I know? So we ask people that we already know, to have events or to help introduce us to four or five people to naturally grow our network, then you have to proactively and actively look for ways to grow your network. You have to also make sure that you have your enthusiasm, your speaking with the authority, the con a conviction, the enthusiasm, your energies up. And then the last thing is, is you have to evaluate, do I have influence? And if you don't feel like you have a lot of influence, then you work on growing your influence. And how you work on growing your influence is you just simply work on growing yourself. But growing your influence just means you become a caring, compassionate, aware person who is more interested in other people than trying to be interested. I have had more than once people are like, were you a news reporter at one point? Because when I visit with them, I just ask questions of people because they love it and they will tell me their life story, whether it's at Christmas dinner parties, whether it's on a plane, whether it's standing in line at Target, 
right? You have to, these are just some of those skills that you have to naturally practice. Again, how do you translate this into the digital world, into social media? You comment on lots of people's stuff. If that's how you want to grow your business and grow your network, you can do that. But then you don't just spend time scrolling and looking. You actively comment. You actively create conversation. You show interest. You look to learn, right? It's those same things. You just take it either in person or you take it in a digital format, okay? You can do one of those two things. So we've got the why that's going to make you work. We've got the how, you know, how many people you want to be getting in front of in a short enough amount of time. If you are not getting in front of that amount of people, then you implement these how to's. And again, you have to decide, do I want to do this? Is this business and is the return of this business worth me going and walking around the mall for an hour or two? And you might feel like, Missy, I hate you. This is the stupidest thing that I've ever done is to walk around the mall. <laughs> but guess what? If you're coachable, you'll trust me on these things. You just look to, because do you think the people that are working right now at the mall want to be working at the mall? No, they do not. They do not want to be dealing with all of the mean, nasty people that they're going to encounter over the next 30 days, right? They would love an opportunity to have something different and you are the one that gets to offer them that hope and that opportunity. But until you get out there and meet them, you're not going to get that option. Okay. So that's really um, kind of the, the third bucket um, that I wanted to share with you guys tonight. Um, and then the last thing that I'm going to say, um, because this is going longer, which I always know it does, is, is that you, you will be successful in this business. You will be successful in any endeavor in your life, whether it's your marriage, your finances, your parenting, your health, when you operate from a place of discipline and decision and you table everything else, meaning you table your emotions, you table the urgent. Do you know how many people are like, I sent you a text message and I haven't heard back from you. It's fine. I have lots of text messages. They're urgent, they're not important. I respond to the important, I don't always respond to the urgent, okay? My, there's lots of things that my kids will say like, I need, you know, some craft for tomorrow. And I'm like, yeah, we're not gonna get to it because that's urgent, but it's not necessarily important. I know these are horrible examples I'm giving you guys, but if you live your life always responding to the urgent, which is very common for females, especially females that are taking care of families, and jobs, and bosses, and spouses, and children, you will find yourself down here on the priority list, and then where do you think your business ends up? Way down here, like not even on, not even on the radar, because it's like, well, she needed this, and he needed this, and I needed to do this, and my mom called about this, and my sister needed me for this, and church asked me to volunteer for this, and you keep responding to the urgent, and you don't prioritize the important. And you have to decide where your, if your business is, is important enough to you in this season that it gets a priority slot, okay? And so that's part of that discipline. And so the discipline shows up in the, in the consistency. The discipline shows up in the doing the things that don't always feel fun or feel good or even feel comfortable. There's a phrase, I heard years ago and it was such um, like an anchor for me. And the phrase is that you learn to get comfortable being uncomfortable. I don't like going to kids' birthday parties because I'm uncomfortable walking into those situations. I mean like, ooh, okay, now we gotta make like small talk. Like it's just not my favorite thing. It's uncomfortable for me. I wasn't ever comfortable walking around the mall striking up conversations with sales clerks, right? And by the way, that's who I talked to at the mall. I didn't talk to like just random people at the mall. Like I would talk to the sales associates, particularly in stores where I knew they worked on commission or places where they would offer you service like a shoe department or things like that. So get comfortable being uncomfortable is another big key. So you have this point of 
discipline that you hone. I have become one of the most disciplined people in my life. And I have done that because discipline is the key to being successful. You discipline your finances, you discipline your emotions, you discipline your tongue. So you don't say stupid things to your spouse that you have to regret and go apologize for the next day, right? You discipline your nutrition, you discipline your sleep so you can function and and live well. You discipline these things because discipline is what gets you to those places and those points of success. And then the other thing is that people grow these businesses and they do the things that they say they want to do because they decide to. And when you make the decision, it simply means you have, when you make a qualified decision, if you hear people say on trainings, like I decided, I decided, I decided. And you're like, well, I decided, I decided a long time ago. I want to be a district manager. I'm still not there. What that means is a qualified decision means that they cut off any other option. Okay. That they drew a line in the sand and they said, this is what I'm doing. I'm following it up with discipline, but I have decided that this is, this is what I'm going to do. Like I decided when I got married, I wasn't going to have an affair. That was just a decision that I made. You discipline yourself, you make good choices, all of those things, but it's a cutting off. It's not even like on the table. It's not an option, right? Because that was a decision I made to stay faithful in my marriage. It's the same thing with this business. Again, I know these are like horrible examples, but or parallels maybe, but it's the same thing in this business. You make a decision. And when you work from a place of decision and you follow it up with disciplines, success is inevitable. And too many times we say, I decided I'm starting an Arbonne business. I want to be a VP. I want $4,000 a month, but there's no discipline to support it. And they don't work from a decision. They work out of emotion and convenience, comfort. And so when there's no comfort, when it's not convenient, when they respond to everything that's urgent, then they don't get the results that they want. And they start to believe a lie that says, I'm doing all the things, I've done all the things, I'm not seeing the results. And rarely is that ever true. Rarely can someone say, I've done all the things, I'm doing all the things, I've made the decision, I'm following it up with discipline, and I'm not seeing. And sometimes that will come, but oftentimes when that comes, that person is right on the edge, right on the verge of their next promotion or their next wave of growth. So um, was this helpful for you all? You can give me like thumbs up, thumbs down, just kidding. (laughs) So um, I have it recorded. Um, I will post recording um, once I figure out how to do that. from my iPad, I can't actually do um, the posting. Is there a place where we can find scripting for these? What kind of scripting were you wondering about, Jean? You'll just have to unmute. Do you want to unmute? I'd love to stay in Sloan. I can unmute you too. Is there a place like for you know, like sending Facebook messages. I know you sent me some, but, um, you know, just calling people and just scripting that people have used that has been successful because I feel like like, there's a lot of things I need to practice. And I feel like a lot of the times that I'd love to have different things. And I even watched a podcast where it's like, I've heard every scripting in the world and there's no perfect script. (laughs) So if you're looking for scripting, you're looking in the wrong place, but I feel like just a place to start. Sure. Sure. So, yeah, so it is true. Um, I would say there were seasons in my business where I thought like, okay, every, we all need to be saying the same thing, like a script. And we all need to be saying the same thing in the overall like concept of what we're sharing, but you do have to personalize it. So what I would recommend doing is I would recommend using your voice memo Um, app on your phone and recording yourself and practice saying like, and I always use names like Ashley or Kim or whatever, like a person I'm calling or reaching out to and just saying like, Hey, Ashley, this is Missy Hides. I hope you're doing great. 
um, hey, I wanted to reach out. I had a quick question I, you know, have um, when you get us, when you get this, will you give me like a call back? I might say something like that on a message. Um, if I'm like calling them on the phone and they don't pick up, um, I might send a voice text or a video text and I might say something similar about, hey, I just wanted to reach out quick. You may or may not know that I have just newly started a business with Arbon. I'm really excited about it, but like, I'm going to be honest, I'm, I'm nervous and I know I don't need to be afraid to reach out to you um, because you're so lovely and you're so warm. Um, but what I wanted to ask, excuse me, is if you would be willing to let me practice and just share with you, um, like in 15, 20 minutes, um, what I'm doing, what Arbon offers, a little bit more about what it's about. You know, it's totally fine if it's not a fit for you, but I just would love, just looking for some people to practice with and share this with. Um, so would you be willing to be one of my first 10 people? You can also say something like, I'm reaching out, I'm a little, I'm excited, I'm a little nervous. Um, but I'm reaching out to you because you are someone I have always admired. You are someone I've always looked up to. I know that you have been really successful at other things that you've done or, you know, whatever you make it specific to them, or you reach out to them and say, I'm reaching out to you because I know you and I have chatted before at work about like, we just want to be home with our babies and we just want more free time and we just want more options. And I know that this is how I'm going to do that. And you were absolutely one of the people that I knew I wanted to share this with. Or you can say something like, um, I'm reaching out to you because I am excited. I'm a little bit nervous. Um, but when I think about who Arbonne could be a fit for, you absolutely came to mind because I know that you love taking care of your skin or I know that you love taking care of your nutrition or your health or I know we've you know, chatted about it. So you either give a compliment to them on why you're reaching out to them, like something that stands out to you about them, or you share with them like a need or something that you know that, that made you think of them. And even if you're like, okay, a girl from high school that I haven't seen in 20 years, I don't really know why I would reach out to her. Maybe there's not like this huge need that you know of and, but you can think of a compliment, you know, like maybe she was like, class president, or maybe you've seen on Facebook that she just, you know, has these cute kiddos and they're always doing fun things and busy people do really great with this business or whatever. You can just kind of practice that. Um, but then you can also take it a step further and you can then forward that message to your sponsor and say, Hey, this is what I've come up with. Would you give me some feedback? And they'll give you feedback because it's always easier for us as a, as a sponsor, as an upline to give feedback on what you feel like you want to say versus us just handing you content or verbiage or a script because it may or may not like connect for you. And it may feel like, oh, I would never say that. I would never say like, I'm excited or nervous. You might say like, oh, this is just pushing me out of my comfort zone. You know, use those words that are more in your normal vernacular so that it sounds like you and you get comfortable saying it. Does that help? Okay. Yeah. A lot. So you practice it and you record it and then you can share it and get feedback from people. So Missy, I have a question. So a big part of my why is because I do not want to have to work forever at my place of employment. I work at a pediatric office and I love it there. I've been there for 10 years. I'm a boss there, but I'm exhausted. And so I feel like that the majority of the people in my friend group, all like we all know each other. And so I can't share that because it's going to get back to my bosses who are also my friends. So I'm like struggling with my why on letting people know that. So, um, so how you could phrase that so that it wouldn't, um, because here's the thing at the end of the day, your bosses feel the same way about their job. I don't care how much people love whatever they're doing. If someone could show them how to replace their income and work less hours and have more choices, they would do it. Like mm -hmm. everybody would, you know what I mean? It's like, my favorite is when people are like, I love my job. I love my job. And then I'm like, mm -hmm. you love your job. But if, if I could show you how to make the same amount of money and work half the hours, 
Would you like, yes, you would. So what I would do is um, I would phrase it in a way that just warms it up to them. You know, you know that this, you know that you've started your Arbonne business because that you want this to be your exit strategy out of your job. And I did too. That's why I started my business. What you can tell them is I'm starting this business. I'm really excited about it. I'm a little bit nervous, but we just want more choices as a family because that's what you're ultimately looking for. Because mm -hmm. if you can replace your income and do this 10 or 15 hours a week versus working 40 to 50 hours a week, you all will have more choices across the board. And so just saying, I just want to have more choices for our family. I really want to have more time with my girls. You can say, I love what I do and I feel really blessed to have the kind of job that I do because I do love it. And that is true, but it is also true and okay to say to people, but I, I want more time with my family. Mm -hmm. Like, no matter with that and no, no reasonable person, no reasonable boss would fire you because you say, hey, I want more time. Family. Right. I'm. I'm not sure where that is. Go talk to them. Go on out. Sorry. I <laughs> That's okay. Why are you on globe? So, um, so you can definitely say that, and I know that there are situations where you have to be a little bit more guarded on what you say. Um, but I think you're always respectful about your current position, and you're always positioning in like. I do appreciate what I have and I love what I have, but I also know that I want more choices and I want more time. And we just want some different things for our family. I think everybody can respect that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that is very helpful. And then um, I feel like my main thing also that I'm struggling with is I struggle daily with like low self-esteem, confidence. And so whenever I'm talking about how much I love the products, it's not coming across with the confidence or the excitement that it needs to because I am insecure and not confident in myself. Okay. So I don't know what to do or how to get past that. Okay. So that's a great question. And that's super common for lots of people. So a couple of things that you can do on that is um, one is make sure that you are reading things or listening to books that are going to help build your self-confidence. Um, and there's lots of different, whether it's like in the Christian genre world, you know, or you could do something more like Rachel Hollis. Um, you know, she's always got good content about just being like having confidence and things like that. But when it really comes down to it, cause you're like, cause that takes time to grow and you don't have to wait until like, you don't have to wait until like, oh, I've got to do personal development for 90 days before I can start reaching out to people. But what you have to do is you have to stop. Um, when, when that comes up, those insecurities come up, what we're actually doing, and this is where people don't even like, they don't typically connect this up. What they're typically doing though, or most often doing, is they're thinking more about themselves then they're thinking about the other person and they're thinking about, am I doing this? Okay. Am I sounding all right? Like, am I projecting well? I I'm sweating. Like, Oh my gosh, I got a pimple on my chin. Like what's she <laughs> of me? Like, am I being too like aggressive? Am I, am I saying it all right? And you're and the focus is on ourselves and the focus needs to be on them. This could be a great gift for them. This can help them. This can benefit them. And you really remove yourself out of the equation in in that way, and you um, really work to reach out to them because you know it's going to be a blessing for them, not because you feel so confident in the reaching out. The other thing that you can do um, that I was taught to do from the very beginning of my business is that I was taught to act like, to pretend I was like a Cecilia Stoll or a Carly <laughs> Wilson or a Donna Johnson or a Deb. Like, 
how would Debbie Neal call and reach out to people? Because, and it's called borrowing other people's beliefs. Like some people say like, fake it till you make it. I'm not necessarily a proponent of that, but I am a proponent of borrowing somebody's belief. So you can borrow my belief. You can borrow Fallon's belief in that Fallon speaks with authority, conviction, and enthusiasm because this business has proven true to her. I speak with authority and enthusiasm because this business absolutely worked for me. So mm -hmm. if you go into those conversations, you can say, okay, what would Missy say? <laughs> This is an amazing opportunity and I'd love for you to take 20 minutes and just hear a little bit more. It's totally okay if it's not a fit for you. All my job is to do is to ask and to offer and I'd love to do that. You know, and just practicing that and then that, that consistency too really helps. But um, it is so good to identify because people, um, and I will message you um, or put it in the group thread. There's a really good training from one of my mentors. Her name's Catherine Lutz, and it's about energy and just making sure that, like, you're bringing the right energy because I have had consultants who will do the right um, work, but they, they really, their energy is like, wah. I mean, it's just like nearly an Eeyore kind of a energy but like there's just not a lot of excitement there's no enthusiasm there's no conviction there's no like passion and so they just go through the motions and they don't see results because they're just going through the motions and the motions in and of themselves don't simply yield the results so that would be kind of my two suggestions in regards to that did that help yes it did thank you so much Awesome. Um, awesome. Cool. All right. Well, I'm going to end this because um, we're now at an hour. So thanks for hanging with me. I know I told you guys 20 minutes, but hope you found this helpful. Um, I will post the recording and, um, but yeah, just start working through these kind of handfuls of steps that I gave you and then be sure that you guys are reaching out um, to really just, um, you know, like as you're working through them, then um, staying in good touch with your upline and, and getting their partnership and things like that. And, um, so yeah, and Jean, I love that idea. I'll message that in the group, um, because it, there's always power in the accountability and the encouragement, especially when you're working kind of towards those same levels. So yeah, that's awesome. So, all right, I'm going to hop off. So it's good to see you all. Hope you guys have a great rest of your night and I'll post this as soon as I can. Bye ladies.